In this video, you will learn how you can send automated reminders to your students on WhatsApp about the last date of their exam application. And you can use this same automation for any other kind of uh, applications as well, like registrations for any event or webinar. So if you want to send reminders about the last date of any application, this automation is for you. And here you just have to create a spreadsheet in which you have to add the details of the upcoming exam and the last date of it. And in another sheet, you just have to add the record of your students and their contact details. So according to their exa uh, exam application status, our workflow of automation is going to search for those students whose applications are pending and reminder messages of the last date of application will be automatically delivered to all of your students on their WhatsApp. Let me show you how you can do this without any coding very easily. Guys, this is the landing page of Pavli Connect. And with the help of this, we are going to set up this automation. From here, guys, you can set up your free Pavli Connect account. So we have pasted this link in the description. From here, you can set up your account and you will get free automation tasks every month to test and set up your automations. So after that, you have to sign in and reach the dashboard of Pavli Connect here. And guys, here you have to click on this create workflow button to set up our automation workflow. So here in this name field, you can give a suitable name to your workflow as well. So I'm giving the name here as automated reminders. for last date of exam applications. All right, so after giving the name like this, you have to click on this create button. You can see the workflow page is red getting ready here. And on this page, guys, you will find these two modules, the trigger and the actions. With the help of these two things, you can set up any automation. So guys, here in the trigger, you have to connect uh, the trigger application in which the trigger event is going to occur. And trigger event is that event which is going to actually start this workflow and the action would be the consequence or the response towards the trigger, right? So here guys, in this use case, uh, the adding of exam details in this spreadsheet, let me show you. This is a spreadsheet I have created and here I'm entering these details about the exam the exam's name or the exam's name, the start date of applications, the end date of applications and the actual exam date. Okay. Right. So as I enter the data, this is going to trigger the workflow. And after that, the workflow is going to send the reminder messages to these students that I have here in this separate spreadsheet. Okay. So we have to connect Google Sheets as our trigger application. Okay, and in the trigger event, select this new or updated row option. And it will give you this URL. This is called as a webhook URL guys. And with the help of this, we are going to make a connection with Google Sheets. And to do that, you just need to follow these instructions or steps written here. Or what you can do, you can just watch the tutorial video from this help text. You can see watch tutorial here text is here. When you click on it, you will reach the uh, you will reach our YouTube channel and here you will find these, uh, this uh, video on uh, how to connect Google Sheets as the trigger inside Pabli Connect. Okay. So, okay. So you can watch this video or you can just follow the instructions and make the connection. And after making the connection, we need to fetch the response of this connection. That means some data from our spreadsheet will come here. So guys, I have copied the webhook URL to follow the steps and here you can see it's showing, it is showing waiting for the webhooks response. Now it is time to fetch the test data from our spreadsheet to here. So guys, I have opened my spreadsheet in an incognito window. Okay. That's because I am using multiple Google accounts in the same browser. So if you are also doing that, it is better to open the spreadsheet that you want to connect in an incognito window so that it, you can connect with it properly, right? And in the initial set of setup of Pabli Connect Webhooks add-on, I have pasted the webhook URL and the trigger column. Now it is time to click on send test button and the data of the first row that I have here about the examination will be sent to my workflow as the test data. You can see it is showing the test data has sent successfully. Let's check in the workflow if we got the data. All right, so we have received the test data like this. It is showing us 
the name of the exam, the sheet's name, the row index, and the start data, sorry, end date of exam application is here, right? Now go back to the spreadsheet, click on submit. Okay, so we are configured here, close this window, right? And from this extensions option, go to Pabli Connect Webhooks initial set, uh, Pabli Connect Webhooks add-on, and from here, click on this send on event button also. So when you click on send on event, what will happen whenever you are going to add any new row here about any upcoming exam, the workflow is going to trigger and will start working, right? And after getting the test data, what I want, I want to see this students list. And here I'm going to check the application status of the students. And I want to send the reminder messages to those students whose uh, applications are still not submitted, right? So to get this data here, to check the data, first of all, we need to connect the Google Sheet here one more time in the section step. And then we are going to fetch out the details from the spreadsheet. Okay, and in the action event, guys, I am going to use lookup spreadsheet rows option. Option. So with the help of lookup rows, we are going to search for those students only whose application status are not submitted. Okay, for that, just click on connect here. And from here, select add new connection, then click on connect with Google Sheets. From here, you have to select that Google account by which you have created that sheet, then give some additional access to your account. Just click on continue from here and you will be connected with your spreadsheet. Okay, you can see the authorization is successful and we are now connected. And here it is asking for the sheets uh, uh, to select the spreadsheet's name and the sheet's name. So the name of my spreadsheet is this students list. I'm going to select it from the given list here. And you can see the sheet name got auto selected because only one sheet uh, because we have two sheets here actually. And from here you can select the name of the sheet. So I'm selecting sheet one. And here it is asking for the lookup column. Lookup column means the column in which you want to search for any term or any value. So guys, I want to search in the D column, the status of those students only who have not submitted the application form. So you can see, you can see the status here as not submitted. So I want to search for this specific term, not submitted term. Okay. So ju I'm just going to copy this term and I'm going to, sorry, first of all, let me put the column name here. So what, uh, what was our column name? The column name in which I want to search for this term is the D column. So in the lookup column, put capital D. Okay. And in the lookup value, put not submitted. And yes, include headers in the response and sort value from the top or bottom. That's your will. I'm selecting top here. And after that, click on save and send test request button and the data will be fetched of those students only whose application forms are not submitted and the data will be here. But before that, remember to toggle this simple response button to off. Okay, so that you can get the response in advanced format. Why we are doing this? I'll tell you. First of all, just let's capture the data. I'm clicking on save and send test request here. And here you can see we got the data in this format, in this array of data format. So we have fetched the data in array format because now we are going to use a feature of Pabli Connect which is called iterator. So, and iterator will make this workflow run one by one for those students whose applications are not submitted. Okay. So we got the data in, uh, we got all the data together at once, but we want to sort out the data one by one. For that, just click here in this plus icon. And from the section step, search for iterator. Here it is. <clears throat> and it is asking to choose the array. So iterator segregates the arrays of data. So that's why we have captured the data in array of array format. And here is the response result array we got in the previous step. So to select the array here, just click here and it will show you the previous step in the drop down. From here, you can select the array, then click on save and send test request. And here you can see it started showing the data in this format and it is showing row index number two. That means it got the, it separated the data of 
a student who is present in row number second. Okay, you can see. So this is the first student whose application is not submitted and it got captured here. So this is how it is going to work for the first student, then for second, then so on. And it will continue to run for those students only whose application status is are not submitted. Okay, right. After that, guys, uh, what we want, we want to send reminder messages for that. Just click here on this plus icon and another action step will open up here. And guys, to send messages on WhatsApp, we need to connect WhatsApp here in this action step. And to connect with WhatsApp, we need to have the access of WhatsApp's API or application programming interface. And to get that access, we are going to use WhatsApp's own cloud API platform. So guys, before using and connecting cloud API here, you have to connect your number with the cloud API setup. So guys, to do that, you can watch the video from the description. We have clearly explained in that video how you can set up your cloud API system. And after that, you can use the cloud API here. So after setting up the system, you just have to search for cloud API and it will appear here. Then you have to just select it. And in the action event, you have to select the send template message option. After that, click on connect button. And if you're making the connection with the cloud API for the very first time, you have to select this add new connection option. And here you can give a name to this connection. And you can see it is asking for the permanent access token of cloud API, the phone number ID and the business account ID. So guys, if you want to know more about making the connections with the cloud API, you can just click here on this here word written in help text and you will reach the forum page of Pabli Connect. And guys, here you will find the videos on setting up the cloud API inside Pabli Connect and how to generate the permanent access token. So you can learn these things from this page. Okay. And guys, to find these things, I can show you my cloud API setup. So guys, this is it. You can see I am under WhatsApp's getting started page of cloud API. And here you can see we have this temporary access token. So first they gave you temporary tokens guys, but, but these tokens expires in 24 hours. So you need to generate a permanent one. And to get the permanent token generated, you can watch the video from the description or from the forum page and you can generate the uh, access token. And after getting the token generated, you just have to paste it here. Similarly, you will find the phone number ID here inside the cloud API setup like this. You just have to copy it and paste it here. And then you will find the WhatsApp account ID here. Copy that, paste it here. Okay. And after pasting all the things, click on save and you will be connected with the cloud API. And this connection that you're making here will be saved in your account. So if in future, if you want to connect with cloud API setup again, you just have to use your saved connection. Okay, as I have already made many connections with my cloud API setup in different workflows. Now I can use those saved connections. For that, I just have to select this existing connection option. And it will show me the list of all the existing connections I have like this. From here, I can choose any one. And then after that, I just have to click on save and I'll be connected again with my cloud API setup. You can see I'm connected. And here it is asking for the templates name. So to send messages on WhatsApp, guys, you need to gen uh, create some message templates. Okay, message templates are pre-created message structures that we can use to send messages to multiple people. Okay, so guys, for this purpose, I have already created a template. I can show you that. So this is a template I have created for sending reminder messages about the upcoming exam applications. And this is the name of the template. You can read exam application general. This is the preview of the message. You can see this is how the message is going to appear to the students. Dear, whatever the name, the name will be here of the student. Just a reminder, your application is due on the date. Here you can place the date. We'll not be able to accept any applications for exam name. Here will be the exam name sent after this date. So guys, this is how the message is going to look like. And here you can see in the message body that I have created here, I have placed some uh, placeholders or body fields called here. So you can see this one and double curly braces, this two and this three. 
This is called body fields, guys. And these are the variable tags we have here. That means we can change these three things with every new message. That means the name of the student, the due date of the examination, and the uh, exam's name, okay? So if you want to know how to create such templates and use it, you can watch the video from the description. We have created a dedicated video on template creation and how you can use them. Okay, so do watch that and you can also create these templates for you, right? And guys, let me select the templates name from the template name field, which is here, exam name application general, okay? And after that, you can see the language code and the template ID will be auto-populated. And here in the recipient mobile number field, you have to enter the WhatsApp number of your student and you'll get the number from the iterator step or the previous step, okay? Where we have separated the data. So you just have to click here on this field and it will show you the previous steps in the dropdown and from this iterator, map this uh, contact number label, you can see, okay? And uh, the data is mapped and you have to map it in this format, you can see uh, with a country code and without any plus sign. So 91 is for India, you have to enter yours. And here it is asking for the body fields, one, two and three. So I have already shown you that we can change three things inside the message. And to get these three things changed dynamically with the message, we need to map the values of these three things in this uh, workflow in the body fields. Okay. So first body field is for the name of the student. So let's map it from the iterator step only. And in the second body field, map the examination's last date. Okay, so you can see in the iterator, you will not find the examination's last, last date. These are the details about the students. You will find the examination details in the trigger step. So click here on the trigger step and you will find the end date of application here. Just map it. And also you will find the examination's name from the trigger step only. So here is the exam's name, just map it. Okay, now you can check your connection with WhatsApp by clicking on save and send test request and a test message will be delivered to this number. Okay, so to show you that message, I'm going to place my WhatsApp number here, then I'll click on save and send test request and you will see the message on my WhatsApp. So guys, I have just clicked on save and send test request button and you can see I have received a new message on WhatsApp. Let me open that for you. And this is a new message I have received. You can see the message. Dear XYZ demo, just a reminder your application is due on this date and will not be able to accept any application for pre-university university exam sent after this date. So submit your application as soon as possible. So this is the same data we have entered here you can see. Okay, and the data got placed in the message at the proper body fields. So this is how it is going to work guys. So we are done setting up this automation and you have to set up this automation only once. After that, you don't have to do anything manually here in the workflow. After that, as and when you are going to enter the exam details here in this spreadsheet, the, de the, the reminder messages will be sent to all your students present here in this spreadsheet whose applications are not submitted automatically on their WhatsApps. And if you want to use this workflow, you can use it because I'm going to place the link of this workflow in the description. And you can clone this workflow in your own free Pabli Connect account and start using this automation instantly. So guys, this is it for today's video. If you got any query regarding our business automation, you can ask and discuss your queries from this forum. And guys, if you want to check the pricing of this application, you can use this link. And if our automations are helping you, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel.